tax write back of uh, 300 crores versus tax expense of 550 so that probably uh, explains that beat as far as ebita is concerned uh, 1300 odd crores but these numbers are looking in good they are not bad set of numbers they are not looking in uh, you know weak set of numbers and that's why probably we have seen a marginal recovery coming in uh, into Hindustan Singh. Not, of course, uh, something like a Tata Steel or JSW Steel or any other metals pack moves slowly, but it's a name which uh, people, uh, people uh, you know, uh, have been liking uh, for a while. Mayuresh uh, Joshi is now also joining us into the discussion. Uh, Mayuresh, your view, first view on Hindustan Singh numbers, they're looking better than what was expected, or at least not as bad as it was expected, even though there is a tax write back. Afternoon, Pankaj. So if you adjust the tax right back, I think the numbers are a little bit better, at least on the bottom line. The top line was always expected to be muted this quarter, with both fall in the realization that you're probably looking at. And again, I think one of the mines, uh, Rampura Kucha, had some amount of issues related to how stripping was progressing on that front. So largely, I think it's going to be a call in terms of how realizations are expected to pan out. Uh, for Hindustan Zing, whether that Zing, Glad, uh, what kind of silver volumes come through from the Sindhisar code mines. Uh, so I think the managed commentary on all these aspects will be extremely critical and crucial to watch out for. And again, I think the bounce back that you've probably seen over the past few weeks uh, in, in prices uh, of, of zinc and lead, uh, I think that is also giving some amount of respite in terms of the outlook for the commodities. So clearly, I think the management outlook uh, is going to be crucial. But if you adjust for the numbers, I think uh, on the bottom line, numbers much better than what the street was expecting. Top line always expected to be muted. Right. Uh, Mayuresh, what do you make of the move at ICICI Bank today, 6% higher? Uh, you think it was uh, undervalued when it went to the 200 levels? Look, at it. it is again the perspective that one really talks about. So if you are a long-term investor, I think there was uh, sufficient value if one really presumes uh, that the next four to six quarters, if you go two quarters before, uh, uh, were, were going to be a little bit tough and tricky. So I think in that respect, uh, the numbers still will be a little bit on the soft and tepid side as far as Q4 are concerned. What happens with Q1 of the coming fiscal will also be a little bit on the softer side. So what largely uh, happens to the book uh, after that, I think, will be a process of how the economic recovery happens. And if the economic recovery is strong enough, uh, my own take is that uh, the credit growth uh, cycle should pick up much sooner than later. And by the second half of FI17, first half of FI18, the earnings growth specifically for a large part of these banks having corporate exposures, but the end corporates, whether they are metal, steel, real estate, commodity players, if they're seeing their working capital constraints uh, getting eased off, the earnings recovery will be faster and the earnings recovery should be in excess of 20-21%, at least for the larger private sector banks. What do you make of Indusin numbers, Mayuresh? Largely stable. So I think if you look at the management committee, I think the management committee is again pointing out uh, to the non-vehicle advances uh, improving on a much uh, uh, faster note. And again, I think the recovery process, uh, specifically in terms of how uh, uh, the NIMS are panning out, have been extremely encouraging. Secondly, I think if you look at uh, most of the aspects, the industry uh, growth in terms of advances, Indescent is much higher than the industry growth. Uh, so again, on that aspect, uh, it is an industry leader. Uh, and then thirdly, probably in terms of uh, how the book is probably moving around, I think the book looks quite stable at this point of time. I think the only headwind possible for the stock would be how the valuations are panning out at this point of time. But largely, in my opinion, I think uh, a stable and a solid set of numbers that Indescent has delivered this time around as well. Right. Uh, Imtiaz, what's your view on Indescent Bank? Not very frequently traded, but uh, how would you view it on the charts? Uh, uh, Pankaj, uh, intraday on a basis, uh, maybe a positional basis, I think so the stocks look a little bit on a negative side. Uh, to the stock has given a last three-day bottom breakout. So this is an indication that the might be the stocks can go back to 930 level. So might be watching for 930 level on a downside. Right. Uh, Imtiaz, just stay on with us. Mayuresh, I uh, request you to stay on. We're taking a break. We're coming back into... We'll discuss some more stocks on the other side of the screen. Nifty is absolutely flat. We are down about five odd points, but off the day's high, not significantly though. Uh, from the day's highest point, we are down 76, but then when we started the show, we were already uh, just 20 points higher. So about 25 points down in the last one hour or so. Mayuresh is still with us. We are talking to Imtiaz. He's also uh, with us. Imtiaz, what do you view as far as BHEL is concerned? After the results went to the highs of 135, now 128. You think it has lost momentum? 
Uh, yes, Pankaj, the momentum has been a little bit lost and uh, the way the stock has performed, I think so very rarely we see such type of a rally in Bale. Uh, in fact, uh, from the level of 112, the stocks uh, non-stop went to around 135, 136 odd level. And from there, I think so the 50 to 60 percent retracement is almost uh, applicable for the stocks. So I think the so downside, I, uh, one can see 118, 119 coming back. And from there, we can see the third leg getting open. So as of now, the trend look a little bit negative side uh, and can see downside till 118, 119. But would you want to short or you would want to stay away? Uh, if some rally comes around, uh, the stocks goes around 131, 132, then can initiate a short position with a stop loss of 136. Mahirish, we've spoken about BHEL earlier. Post the results, do you believe there is any reason to buy? Not, not at this point of time, Pankaj. And clearly, I think the struggle is uh, between how they execute their order book. Uh, the order book had depleted a few quarters back, uh, but with fresh orders coming over the past few quarters, I think the order book has so shown some sort of resilience. So clearly, I think uh, the order book execution is going to be extremely pertinent for bail going forward. What happens uh, with their employee expenses is also a crucial and a critical element in terms of how their other expenses are going to pan out and how their cash positions are going to increase. Uh, so I'm not in a hurry to buy bail at this point. Right. You saw the new listing, Equitas Holding. Does that interest you? It's an interesting play, and again, the uh, microfinance component uh, contributes 53% of the overall top line. That's grown at 45% on a compounded basis over the past four years. But what is more interesting is the used vehicle financing and the MSE business has actually grown at a pace of 125 watt percent, close to that 2,350 watt crore mark. Uh, the asset quality has held out pretty well, uh, so the gross uh, NPS is 0.2 on the microfinance side, 2.4, 2.5% on the used vehicle and MSE fin uh, financing side. Uh, now what happens uh, basically after the conversion to a small payments bank, uh, you're probably expected to see higher provisioning expected to come through, but I think it will satisfy most of the SLRCR on norms uh, because of the book that it is carrying. The only issue would be in terms of return ratios. ROEs are exceptionally high at 13%, ROEs at 3%, and that might just get uh, a little bit soft uh, as the conversion happens into the payments bank. But I think the numbers so far has been extremely encouraging. For the entire part of F515, the top line was close to 401 odd crores. We've already done 420 odd crores for nine months. Uh, in terms of profitability, it was around 107 odd crores, but it's already crossed 120 odd crores. So I think the outlook looks pretty encouraging. Valuations at around 2.1 after the huge rally that we've seen, 2.2 times price to book. Uh, uh, seems reasonable if you do a comparison check with SKS microfinance. So I think the outlook for all these uh, uh, smaller players uh, look very, very interesting. I think the management backing is extremely important for all these stocks. The management need to have conviction and strategy in place to drive their earnings growth. Right. Uh, Imtiaz, do you have a view or on the first day of listing it's it's incorrect for you to comment? Uh, it will be very difficult to comment because as of now, can't say at least learn. We need to spend a couple of more trading sessions for the stocks to develop some technical tools. Right. Uh, Biocon, what's your view, Imtiaz? Uh, can it rally further? Uh, Pankaj, uh, today would be the first day for the Biocon to show lower top, lower bottom formation and this is already given an indication that the weakness could arise. Uh, no doubt the stock has already shown a very good performance from the level of 454 to almost uh, 574, that is almost uh, more than 100 rupees rally. So the, around 30, 40 rupees the correction is almost uh, uh, can be seen and downside can be seen around 514 level. So I would definitely wait for the stocks to retest 514 and from that level if any bounce come then would be a very good opportunity to buy. Right. Mayuresh, suddenly a lot of interest in Biocon? But I'll still wait and watch Pankaj. Yeah. So what happens with their insulin facility in Malaysia, I think a lot of CAPEX has gone through and that will impact their ROEs, ROCs, which my own belief is should be in the range of around 12, 12 and a half to 13, 13 and a half. Uh, again, I think the kind of approvals that uh, they're probably expecting to come through, I think that's a positive sign. But one must understand, I think it's a very painful process uh, for the end approval to come through. And again, I think the potential market size for each of these approvals need to be closely monitored and studied. So I think after the sharp run-up that we've seen in the stock, I think I'll not be in a hurry to buy Biocon. I think uh, more or less look at how numbers are panning out, what happens with their CRO ops, what happens with their initial facility in Malaysia, what kind of CAPEX plans are on place. And that will basically determine the trend going forward in terms of how the return ratios will pan out. Right. Uh, as far as uh, supply is concerned, uh, do you like that name? Oh, yes. I'm optimistic on uh, supply as a long-term story. Uh, the kind of uh, 
pipeline that it has got purely in terms of the AMD applications. I think that is a very encouraging sign. 149 applications, 72, 73 approved uh, so far. You're looking at a huge uh, potential CFC inhaler size of more than $3 billion. You're probably looking at a launch happening in the UK market. And though there might be some generic launches that might happen in the US market, I think the opportunity itself is very, very large uh, uh, in, in the core products for Cipla. The domestic business has held up pretty well. And our own take is uh, that over the next two years, 18% growth, both in terms of top line and earnings, is not ruled out. So I think an EPS around 27, 28 odd rupees is, is what I'm looking at for Cipla uh, on a by 17 basis. So I like the story, I think, but it's a long, drawn out story. So I think uh, investors should be having patience in this stock. Right. My wish, stay on with us, Imtiaz. Uh... Stay on about a minute remaining for closing. Uh, markets are about to close. 16 points down for uh, the Nifty, 18 points rather. But this is uh, in the last five, six minutes that we have you know, seen this move coming in. Sensex barely flat. Uh, Tata Motors on your screen, 410, 411. 1.6% higher. Wipro is down 7%, 557. Wipro, of course, as a results impact. ONGC up 1.5. ITC are down about 1.5%. NDPC absolutely flat. Power Grid down about a percent. ONGC up 1.5. Cipla up about a quarter of a percent. Indescent Bank, again, that's a results impact. 1.3% in terms of lower, but numbers were very, very strong. Yes Bank uh, down about 0.5%. Adani Ports down about 1.5%. Infosys down about 1.4%. Reliance 0.1% higher results come out tomorrow for Reliance Industries. Kotak Bank down about 0.3%, HDFC Bank down about 0.6%. Bharti Airtel 0.1% lower, Maruti up about a percent, Gale up about a quarter of a percent, Tata Motors DVR uh, absolutely flat. There was a negative bias over there. Tata Motors main share, however, did quite well today. Sun Pharma 0.1% higher, Orbindo 7 odd rupees lower. That's the closing bell, 17 points down for the Nifty, 19 for Sensex, but I expect that to adjust quite a bit on the higher side because majority of these losses came in in the last five minutes. We were broadly and mainly into green uh, throughout the day. So five, six days of continuous green and we've snapped that down today. ICICI Bank, 5.2% higher, 250, 251. SBI, 3, 3.5% higher right from the word go since morning. Coal India, 3% higher. Bank of Baroda should also come up into this top gainers list. Uh, it was also among the top gainers. Coal India was up 3%. Bank of Baroda was up about uh, 3, 3.5%. Three Let's look at some of the other gainers. BPCL was up 1.6%. Uh, uh, Tata Motors did well. It was up 1.5%. As I told you, Tata Motors DVRs did not do particularly well. Uh, Wipro was down 7.5%, 557 Bharti Infratel was down 3.5%. Ultratech uh, has been doing well, uh, down 3.6%. BHEL was among the top losers today, down 3%. Uh, Ultratech we saw was there. ACC, Ambuja, Grasim, all three are cement plays. And uh, all three of them uh, did not do particularly well. Uh, Mayuresh, any view on Ultratech? Uh, you think valuations had run up ahead of uh, expectations? So again, I think uh, one really needs to look at the perspective and if one really assumes uh, over the next two to three years, uh, the cement uh, demand should come back uh, in a significant manner, assuming how the real GDP growth will pan out and the government focus on uh, housing and the infrastructure sector. I think players like Ultratech having a pan-India presence should benefit. I think what has probably happened in terms of the stock price movement right from lower levels to levels that we'd seen. I think some money is being taken off the table uh, because people are making money in this stock from an image short-term perspective. However, I think the larger picture with the acquisitions that they're doing and the expected capacity at the end of FI17, close to 91.2 MTPA, would hold it in good stead. I think with realizations improving, volumes improving, utilization levels improving, I think the blended uh, EBIT upper ton should improve drastically for Ultratech over the next two to three years. So again, I think this is not a story from uh, now which can be played for a quarter or two quarters. I think you need to play this story over the next couple of years, where our belief is that even though valuations probably are looking very, very reasonable compared to the five-year historical averages, I think the next two to three years are going to have a quantum amount of growth uh, for a lot of these cement players, Ultratech included in that. And there's your view on uh, the cement pack. Uh, Pankaj, we had already seen a very good rally in the entire cement pack and I think so. That this is a time right now to see some sort of a profit booking, some sort of short getting initiated. So I would definitely avoid right now at the, the stocks because... You would avoid buying or avoid shorting? I would avoid buy, buying at this level and if some ri rise come, so I would definitely use the opportunity of sell on rise. Right. Uh, LIC Housing, what is your view, uh, MTS? Uh, after results, it's cracked down quite a bit. 
I think so. The stock has a very good support at 450 level. Until unless it doesn't go below 450, one can look after uh, for the opportunity to buy on decline strategy. And as of now, if I look, uh, look after it, uh, uh, maybe uh, some uh, consolidation is zone is continue. Uh, today, entire day was a consolidation zone. I think the stocks would participate on a higher side, and uh, 450 should not be broken. Right, uh, Mayuresh, uh, LIC Housing. You think it was overowned name, and that's why on an inline numbers it uh, took a beating. It was more to do with uh, how the advances uh, growth panned out for the company and again the expectations were uh, pretty high. But again, I think one must really understand that in a tough economic situation, I think the loan growth uh, was quite reasonable, the asset quality was maintained by the company. Now going forward, if one really assumes interest rates coming down, the transmission happening, the cost of borrowing has come down drastically for the company. So I think the NIMS would be maintained, the spreads would be maintained for the company, but with asset quality pressures easing off, my own take is that the advances growth should be for the better part of the next couple of years in excess of 80 to 20 percent, which should drive earnings growth of 21 to 22 percent for LIC housing. Again, at around 2.2, 2.3 price to book. Uh, reasonably valued, but again, I think if one really has the conviction over the next two to three years, housing finance companies should do well, LIC included. Right. Uh Overall, uh, any meaningful decline, you would be a buyer? So again, I think uh, one really needs to uh, uh, let the stock consolidate, let, let us see what happens with the other housing finance numbers, uh, how the general industry trend is planning out, what kind of pace we are looking at for the better part of FI16, and what kind of a consensus pace comes out for an FI17 perspective. So I think let's, let's wait for the other housing finance company numbers as well. Right, uh, Mayuresh, thank you so much uh, for taking out time for us. Imtiaz, before you go, any view on REC, PFC? Uh, how would you look at these names? They were 5% today each. I think so. Rather than going for REC, I would definitely prefer for PFC because the uh, structures are looking very much positive. There, there is a very multiple uh, tops formation in the range of 174 to 173, and today the stock has given a breakout of that. Maybe uh, if any cool off, then definitely would be a very good buy. On the downside, I think so. 158 is a very strong support. So until the stock sustain number 158, on the higher side there is a one uh, gap down opening. That level can be filtered. That goes around 189, 190 level. Right. Uh, Intias, thank you so much for taking our time for us. Always a pleasure uh, talking to you. We have the adjusted close. Nifty is down about two points. It was down 13 points on a provisional basis, but it was largely expected because last three, four minutes we had seen that move coming in. Uh, that's it as far as the 230 factor is concerned. Uh, we're taking a break. We're coming back in two minutes. On the other side of this break, we'll play out a panel discussion, a very interesting panel discussion, uh, where Amitabh Kant, CEO, Niti Aayog participated, Rajiv Lal, founder and MD of I. DFC Bank, Omkar Goswami as well as Milan Rao, President and CEO of GE Healthcare India and South Asia participated. And uh, the topic of that uh, discussion was, is India finally ready to, up, uh, to move up the value chain?